you might own an illegal substance. Don't worry, you're not alone. It's on store shelves, health blogs, and Gordon Ramsay's pans. That's right, I am talking about olive oil, and there is a chance that yours is illegal. Let me explain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hello! First off, Happy New Year. It's the end of 2020. Does it feel that way? No! Anyway, I was re-watching Melissa's video from a few weeks back, and it got me thinking about the fanciest food that I regularly buy. Hold on. Extra virgin olive oil. I don't think I pointed at the right places. Uh, anyway. I threw all that effort, but I'm just gonna put it back there. I always felt that extra virgin olive oil was extra fancy. Everything from the viscosity of the liquid to the imagery of Mediterranean groves to the name. It just makes me go, Mamma Mia, it's fancy. However, the name, it's a little weird, right? I don't know about you, but my perception of virginity is pretty binary. You're either virgin or you're verge out. It doesn't seem to be the scale that the name implies, so how can something be extra virgin? Let's find out. I started by doing a few Google searches and immediately realized that olive oil is way more confusing than I expected. So I picked up Extra Virginity by Tom Mueller, which compiled history, chemistry, and industry interviews in its 300 something pages. Okay, so this book. Uh, there's no physical copy because I got an ebook since shipping time during the holidays were whack! My honest opinion is that it, it's kind of dry because it really does cover every aspect of olive oil, even the ones I don't care about. There was religion, medicine, and witchcraft. Like, there's a lot going on, and I'm not gonna talk about most of that. If any of that does sound interesting to you, boy, do I have a book for you. Anyway, I got two big takeaways, and in order to understand them, we need to start with the olive. There are three distinct types of oil one can make from olives. Pomace oil, refined oil, and virgin oil. The distinction lay in the extraction and treatment methods. Pomace oil uses the pulp of previously pressed olives. They then extract the last remains of oil with heat and chemical treatment. Refined olive oil extracts the oil from the olive using mechanical processes like washing, centrifugation, and filtration, but refines out imperfections to leave a colorless, odorless, and largely flavorless oil. Virgin olive oil exclusively uses those mechanical processes to extract the oil, but there is no further refinement. In a lot of ways, virgin olive oil is like a fresh pressed juice. So to reiterate, the virgin in extra virgin olive oil actually refers to how it's extracted and how it's treated, or lack thereof. But the results, the oil, can depend on a lot of different factors, like the olives or the configuration of the centrifuge. And by the way, uh, they use a centrifuge. <laughs> like, I always thought olive oil was like the result of like squishing a bunch of olives, but no, you just spin it around until um, they, they, they squirt? No. That's not the right one. Anyway, the International Olive Council, or the IOC, establishes the standards of olives and olive products for its member states, which account for more than 98% of global olive production. For the countries that adhere to its guidelines, there are four types of virgin olive oil. They're ordered by the quality of the oil they produce, and they're judged primarily on the basis of acidity and a taste test performed by a panel of experts. At the bottom of the barrel is Lampant. It's acidic, unsavory, and legally unfit for human consumption in that form. It usually ends up as the basis for refined olive oils. Next is ordinary virgin olive oil. It's less acidic, but still contains sensory defects. Then there is virgin olive oil. It has even less acidity and only a few defects. However, at the top of the order is extra virgin olive oil. It is the least acidic and cannot have any sensory defects. Now I should stress that these terms aren't protected and their meanings can vary in places that aren't members of the IOC. However, in every case that I found, extra virgin olive oil is always top tier. It's always the best that olive oil can be. However, in my anecdotal experience, it's also the most common. I don't know about you, but I 
only ever see extra virgin olive oil. And if I were naive, I would kind of just assume that that's because like only the best oils make it to the grocery store. Unfortunately, I read this book and boy howdy, uh, that's not the case. <laughs> it turns out most olive oil and I, I assume almost all of the olive oil I've eaten is fraudulent. It, a fraud, it's fake. And in some cases it can be illegal. Right to jail. Here's the deal. Olive oil fraud has been traced back to as far as ancient Rome, and it's only gotten more rampant as long, complicated supply chains have become popular in our age of commercial globalization. Here are just a few ways oil can be fraudulent. One, it's not actually olive oil. Olive oil can be diluted with cheaper oils and covered up with corruption. Two, it's not actually extra virgin. This olive oil may not pass IOC testing or is cut with older, less quality oils. And three, it's not actually Italian. Many consumers are willing to pay a premium for Italian olive oil, and so producers will do everything they can to make their oil seem as Italian as possible, even if the only Italian thing about the product is where it was bottled. Now that wasn't a comprehensive list, but I think it gives you a good idea of how, how varied the fraud can be. It can be something like pretty meaningless, like you're still having olive oil, it just isn't from where it says it's from, to, to just straight up not being olive oil. <laughs> What the heck? But if you if you are interested in knowing like the many different ways that this can occur and, and its true impacts, this book. Anyway, that book kind of derailed this whole video. Like I went in with one question, how can something be extra virgin? And I found my answer. It's the purity of the process and the product, except the reality of the situation is anything but pure. It involves corruption and deceit and the mafia sometimes. So obviously there isn't an easy way to unravel all of that, but there is a way to have fun. If the problem is with a confusing supply chain and middlemen with bad intentions, what if we just cut them out? Hello! What's up? Um, so I'm making a video about olive oil. It, it turns out olive oil can be fake. Okay. That's <laughs> a <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I thought, uh, being quirky and all, like, what if we get rid of that middleman and we just make our own olive oil? And when I say we, I mean Why? you. Why? I thought that that's where this was going. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to make olive oil from um, scratch? From what I've read, it's just like juicing some olives. They need to be fresh olives. <laughs> Um, you both, we're both aware of the fact that it's winter in Canada right now. Are we both aware of that? I haven't seen <laughs> outside. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess I'm gonna go figure out how to make olive oil. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'll let you know how this goes. I make no promises. I'm just oh. gonna try my best. Oh, that's a promise, isn't it? So I went online and I found a recipe and it looks like all you need are fresh olives and water to make olive oil. I've never actually seen fresh olives in the store. I've only ever seen them in brine. So I'm gonna call some places to find out. Thank you for calling Walgreens. Hi there, um, I just have a quick question. I was wondering if you sell fresh olives. I was just wondering if you sell fresh olives. Uh, not right now. Okay, that was a dud. I was wondering if you sell fresh olives. Fresh olives, we do, yes. Oh, do you have some in stock right now? We do, we sell them by weight. Oh, awesome. Okay, thank you. Well, that's good news. Um, I thought that that was gonna be a lot harder. Let's go get some fresh olives. Please stand. So I headed to the deli section and turns out they didn't have fresh olives, but I bought them anyways, just to see if we could make something out of it. Looks like we're making olive oil with deli olives. Okay, I have my rinsed olives. I'm gonna put them in here. Then after you pat them dry, you just crush them into a paste. Oh, this is not, this is not, this is not working too well. I finally used my noggin and put it in a food processor. 
that definitely did the trick. So once your olives look like this, you're supposed to stream in hot water and then blend it some more until the oil separates from the paste. We're just gonna let it rest for five to 10 minutes and cover it with a paper towel. I don't know. It also does not smell like olive oil. It smells like olives, not like olive oil. Keep you posted. So uh, I let this thing set. I'm going to do the next step, which is put it in a cheesecloth. I don't have a cheesecloth, so I'm going to use some tights. These are clean, by the way. Oh, oh, no. Oh gosh, the juice is dripping. <laughs> okay, let me just keep going. Mom, I don't think you're gonna be able to use these tights again. Do I squeeze it? I don't know. And now we have to let this rest for 30 minutes. And if we did this right, it should separate so that there's oil on the top and then whatever else is on the bottom. I expected this to go terribly, so I also picked up some real olive oil. And now I'm gonna put them in identical glasses and see if she can guess which one I made. <clears throat> Hello, Sabrina. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. So, uh, you know how you made me, made me? You know how you forced me to make <laughs> olive oil from scratch? Yes. How did so it go? So I did it. I went to the grocery store, picked up olives, and uh, I got home and they smelled like brine. <laughs> so <laughs> they definitely weren't fresh. But anyways, I made some. One of them is mine. <laughs> but which one's the mine? The one that's milk. You milked the olive. You made olive. <laughs> so I haven't tried it yet. So you're gonna get my blind taste <laughs> test reaction. I have some delicious bread to soak up the, uh, this. Oh, oh buddy, I have some news for you. No, you please don't make me drink it. <laughs> Do you know how official olive tastings go according to the I, IOC? Please don't make me drink it. You're gonna make me drink it. A little it. sip, just a little sip for the views. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> it's salty. That's definitely not olive oil. Okay, so there's actually specific sensory things to look out for uh, in an olive oil. In, a, in, in what you clearly made was an extra virgin olive oil. Um, and I want to see if there's any attributes on this list that, that resonate with you in that little sip that you took. Okay. One. Muddy sediment. There's lots of muddy sediment in here. I'm pretty sure this whole thing is muddy sediment. <laughs> check. Is it earthy? Definitely check. Tastes like the earth. <laughs> is it vinegary? Oh yeah. She is vinegary. <laughs> is it sour? Yes. Very sour. Does it have a little bit of that rancid kind of taste? <laughs> If this is the criteria for olive oil, then I've definitely made olive oil. Oh no, these are all of the negative attributes. <laughs> um, given the fact that you've knocked it out of the park with this, I'm gonna say that the olive oil you made is unfit for human consumption. Oh, awesome. So Great I, work. I should go see a doctor. <laughs> Thank you for doing that for this silly little video. I knew it wasn't gonna work and I still asked you to do it. It was an experience. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video now. Thank you, bye. Well, if anything else, this all just made me appreciate olive oil and the people who make it way more. I was gonna say a little bit more, but like significantly more. Now, don't get me wrong, if the only problem with my olive oil was like it wasn't passing some, some snooty olive oil taster's palate test, I would not care. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more to it than that. There are actual people being hurt. People who spend their days and years and lifetimes dedicated to making really good oil. To be entirely honest, everything about it, from the shape of the fruit to the people behind it, reminds me of wine. It's, it's a little bit obnoxious, 
and a whole lot of passion. However, I know when I'm buying a cheap wine and I know when I'm supposed to savor a good wine. Like, I don't actually, because they all taste the same. But I know that I'm supposed to. The same can't be said for olive oil, for, for various reasons, including fraud. But one big reason is that we don't know that we're supposed to savor it. I hope you understand now, like I just figured out very recently, that all extra virgin olive oil is not made equal, and that unfortunately, liars tend to be the winners. And if you don't believe in that, and you want to support people who work hard, who work honest, and you can afford it, why not splurge on a good bottle of olive oil? Or not. I don't know. I wish there was an easy way to balance like the recognition of meaningful, impactful labor and the fact that that price tag is usually pretty inaccessible. I guess it's just one slippery situation. Get it? Cause oil? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider sharing it with a few friends. It goes a long way on YouTube. You might also enjoy our food playlist where we cover everything from fish fraud to the reason why European food is surprisingly bland. But stick around for a second because we are thanking Squarespace for sponsoring this video. In case you didn't know, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. It's how Melissa Taha and I are running ours. The Answer in Progress website has been built on Squarespace long before they sponsored us because I don't have the time to learn how to code a website that runs this smoothly and is optimized for mobile. I don't even know how to optimize something for mobile. Luckily, I don't need to because of Squarespace. They have a bunch of templates that are easy to personalize and guides to help you do it. But if you still get stuck, they also have award-winning 24-7 customer service. So whether you run a blog, an e-commerce storefront, a fledgling media business with a page dedicated to newsletter subscriber exclusives, or really anything else because everything's online nowadays, Squarespace is perfect for you. Head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch, use offer code ANSWERINPROGRESS to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But either way, have a lovely day.